It is a tale of two parties in Washington, a show of unity from House Democrats as they officially pass the torch to a new generation of leaders. New York Representative Hakeem Jeffries, elected to lead House Democrats in the 118th Congress in January, joined by Catherine Clark of Massachusetts and Pete Aguilar of California as whip and caucus chair. Succeeding House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Congressman Jeffries will be the first black lawmaker to lead either party in Congress. Today, the newly elected leader spoke out about the history-making changes at the top. I stand on the shoulders of people like Shirley Chisholm and so many others as we work to advance the ball for everyday Americans and get stuff done. We, as a team and as a caucus, reflect the diversity and the strength of the American people. It's not lost on me what my election means for, for my community, for the Latino community. Uh, being a kid from San Bernardino, having an opportunity to help guide this caucus is a great responsibility. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the other side of the aisle, uh, House Republicans are fighting amongst themselves over who will be the next speaker. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy faces the possibility of a humiliating and potentially career-ending defeat as he scrambles to secure enough votes to get his hands on the gavel. At least five members of his caucus have already publicly vowed to vote no on McCarthy as speaker. And joining me now is the newly elected House Democratic whip, Congresswoman Kathleen Clark of Massachusetts. Congresswoman Catherine, Catherine Clark of Massachusetts, I'm sorry, that's me being silly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Congresswoman, and congratulations. Thank you so much. So I just want to show the picture, just the look of you guys, the side-by-side -side of the new leadership. Presumably, we're not 100% sure about the Republican side, but just looking at their leadership team and your leadership team, it is a it is a big difference. What do you think that it will mean for the people of this country? The people of this country will be able to see themselves in our leadership. And when you can see yourself in those who are making laws and affecting your life, then you know there's hope. And it is a message that I hope that we can send to everyone and especially to the girls of this uh, nation that they can do anything they want to do. And when the diversity of our caucus is so beautiful and it reflects the beautiful mosaic of this country. And what does that mean? It means we bring those ideas and those people with us. And for me, I want to tell the women of this country, they will come and sit right next to me at the leadership table. And there's, I mean, look, it, it's not lost, I think, on a lot of folks that this was an election in which women had a lot to say because the right uh, to control your own body is, is no longer universal in this country, thanks to the Supreme Court. And the voters had something to say about that, and especially voters of color who were very strongly, you know, pro-freedom on this for women. Um, and so I, I want to look at some of the things that can be done. Um, there's still a lame duck session. I know there's still stuff to do. What would your priorities be? Let me just, before I get to the stuff that can be done now, what would your priorities be when, when you're coming in? You're going to be counting the votes for, for what causes. Yeah, I mean, we're going to keep doing the work that we've been doing, which is putting people and solutions together. Look at our track record from the past session. Um, we were able to, to make sure that we were cutting health care costs for, for our seniors. We passed the historic investment in climate change. We, are, we were able to um, stand up for women and reject the idea that they were now going to be secondhand citizens. And I have to tell you, as I traveled the country in the midterms, I heard heard that energy from women. I saw that women were registering in record numbers. They were showing up, volunteering, making their voices heard, along with young people. And when what I would get asked, isn't the interest in abortion and reproductive justice waning? Isn't this an issue you're putting too much emphasis on? I really wanted to ask, have you ever met a woman? <laughs> have you ever talked to her about her life? And I think people understood on a fundamental level that if if the GOP was willing to come into people's lives and tell them when and if to have children um, and you know put their judgment in place of a woman's of her medical 
needs, of her economic situation, there is no line they yeah. want to cross. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about some of the unfinished business. Number one, um, the question, uh, David Cicilline is challenging uh, Jim Clyburn, uh, Congressman Clyburn, uh, for the number four position, Democratic leadership. Uh, any comment on that? And he made the point that, um, that leadership should include in its diversity an LGBTQ member, which he would add to it. What do you know about that back and forth? Uh, listen, I fully support Jim Clyburn. I think that he is staying on on the leadership team and is a valuable and key player. And we are also going to, you know, we do reflect the beautiful mosaic, and right. that includes LGBTQ. Oh. So we will see tomorrow. Okay, we'll find out tomorrow. The other thing is there is a lame duck session before you all take over the new leadership team. And I'm just going to put up a few of the things that are on the docket. There is funding the government, um, which I think a lot of people would not like to see left to the chaos Congress that could come, the chaos leadership that could come, reauthorizing the National Defense Authorization Act, COVID-19 funding, additional aid to Ukraine, which, you know, people like Marjorie Greene have said they would like to end, um, raising the debt limit, which seems a little bit nervous to, to pass along to the next Congress, uh, and also reforming the Electoral Account Act to make sure that we can't have a legislative version of another insurrection. How much of that do you think gets done in the lame duck? Uh, we're going to, to try and do all of that, because as you said, we know that we are now watching a GOP in the House that is taking over and choosing chaos over community. Uh, they have led with obstruction over the years they've been in the minority, and they have no plan to do anything different. They have not found how low they can go yet, and they are willing to bring in anybody uh, from the extreme side of their party to try and get power. But when, when you don't have a moral compass, it is hard to steer a ship. And so we're going to pass a budget that reflects the needs of these people. We are going to make sure that Ukraine can continue to defend itself. And we are going to pass a military budget. These are the things that I'm working on, appropriations with my chairwoman, Rosa DeLauro. She is working every minute of every day to get this work done so that we can make sure that our house is in order because we're a party that believes in governance and responsibility and that's our responsibility to the American And people. all of that will be done under, um, I believe her new title is going to be Speaker Emeritus but still right now, still Speaker there's one Nancy speaker at Pelosi. a time. Yeah, Nancy and Pelosi. And she is, is still speaker, speaker Nancy Pelosi. And I just want to mention something that is going to happen in the lame duck, which we can all celebrate, and that's marriage equality. Yeah. Not with not all the Republicans supporting it, weirdly enough, even though it's yeah, but for both LGBTQ uh, folks and interracial marriage. Interesting times. Thank you very yeah. much. Congratulations, Thank you so much. Congresswoman Catherine Clark, the House Democratic Whip designate. I mean, she's gonna be counting all those votes. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for being here.